today. If you're towing your Hobie Wave on a trailer, there's one thing you need to look at, and that's where it's tied down at the front. I got uh, a bit of a shock the other day when I took off the hatch plate and had a look inside the hull, and where I'd been tying it down, the hull was actually split. If we have a look at the back part of the boat, the back part of the boat is supported on a fairly substantial part of the hull. However, at the front, it's supported on uh, just a narrow part of the hull. So when you use your tie down, you're putting considerable pressure uh, on that part of the hull. Now this is the sort of tie down that I was using. It was just a simple tighten the strap and pull up. Okay, so that kept the boat nice and tight. However, the other day I was uh, undoing this hatch plate, uh, which gives us access directly down to where the, um, the point of pressure is on the hull. And what I found was that the hull had cracked. Now, I have actually fixed where the crack was. You can see there's a bit of a, a black mark there. That is where I put um, some fiberglass. But the hole of the uh, hull on the inside, probably about nine inches of the hole, had actually split. Now I think if you look at the, if you poke the side of the hull, um, you see that it's rather soft. So I mean I wasn't overly worried about the crack, but a bit concerned that um, it was there anyway. So I filled it up with uh, fiberglass just to see what would happen. But now, to alleviate that, this is what you need to do. Uh, now I should say, I've got this hatch plate here. If you, you'll, you won't have a hatch plate on your Hobie, I'll put this hatch plate in. Um, it's not a bad idea, I I've, uh, often sail near uh, beaches and um, in this hatch plate uh, I've got uh, an anchor that is just in there which I take out so if I bring my boat in and there's a few swells I can just chuck my anchor on the beach and the boat won't go away so normally under this seat here there is a hatch plate which is there well, I assume it's put there in the formation um, of the hull it's used to uh, roto mold the hull so I've just made that hatch bigger and put in a hatch plate. For those of you who haven't had a look under the seats of your Hobie, you'll find that there is a hatch plate here and there is another hatch plate on the back and then over on the other side and then also on the other side of your boat over there. So you might want to have a look at the two front ones just to see if you've got splitting in your hole. But how to avoid that? Now as you can see the hull sits on the roller and where it sits on the roller there's actually a small indentation in the hull. We need to protect the uh, boat say from here to here and the way of doing that is to get some cheap uh, channel grating, the channel grating that goes in the ground to take away storm water and cut the sides off and I'll show you how this is done. So here's the picture of the channel grating before I cut it and uh, here is the uh, grating after I've cut it. Okay, So we end up with channel grating like this. There are the two discarded sides but with the channel grating like this with uh, a bolt. There's a bolt just in the end and I'll show you why in a minute. Uh, I, I cut mine with uh, an angle grinder but you could cut it with a hacksaw but it, uh, it might take you a while. An angle grinder is the way to go but watch out for the molten bits of, uh, of plastic as they fly off. Uh, always do it with shoes on. So, roll your boat up onto the rollers uh, as you get it up from the beach and once it's up on the beach just lift your boat slightly and slide 
underneath. Okay, so your boat just sits nicely in the channel. And then you can do up your strap, um, and it's nice and tight. Actually, it's, um, it's a bit of an advantage to cut these. Cut these so that your boat, uh, I'll show you that. And cut these so that your boat is supported um, either side by the channel grate. So when you crank down on your strap, part of the weight of the boat is going to be taken from the side here. The majority is going to be taken from here, but some of it will also be taken from here, which distributes the weight along the whole length uh, of this hull and uh, stops it from being uh, all the weight just being in one point. Um, the idea of the bolt is so that uh, when you're getting your boat on, you put this on your roller and the bolt, and then when you're putting your, your, your boat on, the uh, bolt will stop this thing, this support, from sliding off. Uh, pushing your boat into the water, it's just a matter of pushing. And the slide will just slide out as your boat goes in the water. For coming back in again, Put your thing, put your slide just there, your bolt there, and as you pull your boat on, this will just stay there. Of course, when you're launching your boat, this will just roll off and uh, roll onto the sand or into the water, uh, whatever you're doing. So I hope that's given you some idea of how to alleviate the pressure on your boat. Um, have a look in your inspection holes. It's also good um, to perhaps ha have a look in these inspection holes, um, lift up your seat um, and look at the inspection plate, uh, get out some silicon and redo them again because you might find if you aren't getting water in your holes it'll probably be through the um, inspection plates. Okay. Now even having made that support for your boat I guess it's also a lesson that whatever tidying you use for your boat um, don't tie it down too tight or you still may end up putting undue pressure on your hull. Now one other modification uh, I've made to this boat since I last posted the video was to increase the padding at the back of the boat. Now I've shortened my rudder arms quite a bit so that I can sit uh, way back on the boat. I usually sit around about here on the boat. So putting this extra padding on the boat uh, means that I can, uh, I'm much more comfortable and can sit on the boat uh, for much longer. Also in one of my videos on uh, how to trailer your boat, uh, I showed you a way of making your rear rudders secure when you're travelling. I've got rid of that idea of putting a bolt through the rudders because it was uh, far too tiresome and took up too much of the time and I often lost the bolt. Now I just use an hockey strap. Okay, if you just have a hole uh, in each rudder, just a small hole that doesn't affect your rudder, just an hockey strap up over the top and down and that keeps the rudders uh, nicely in place and stops them from flailing around. Also for those of you who are launching your boat uh, off the beach, off the back of your trailer, I usually push my boat off the back of the trailer, uh, let it uh, drop until the front spreader bar drops down onto the sail box. Now to protect the sail box, I've just put this piece of heavy duty rubber here, which just protects the sail box and uh, it also protects um, uh, the uh, boat. Uh, one other modification I've done to the boat is add um, a couple of flares at the front. Now, this is particularly helpful if you're going um, downwind uh, in really strong seas. Um, stops the front of the boat from digging in. I've tried these now uh, a couple of times. They work really well and, and uh, 
actually look quite spectacular as they send up a, a huge spray into the air. But it's basically um, angle, um, angle aluminium uh, with, uh, these are basically uh, breadboards cut to shape. I found you don't want to make them very big. If you make them very big and you're going slow and you're going over waves, you tend to slop over the waves. But being small, they don't interfere with um, how, your, how your boat uh, handles. Also, uh, make sure that they're angled back so that if the front of the hull does go under, its tendency is to pop up. Now, one more little tip on the rope, on the sort of rope that you should use on your boat. Uh, nowadays, in a lot of hardware stores, um, a lot of them are selling a really fancy looking rope all wound up and it's quite cheap. And it looks like this, this looks like a really good boat rope, when in fact this is just uh, rubbish. If you open it up, you find that it's, uh, it's um, made of very, fi very fine um, stuff, it's all, and, and, and when you pull it, it just, it all just breaks off like cotton. Its internal strength is just rubbish. So don't buy your rope from uh, just your, your $2 shop or the hardware store. Go to a proper boat chambery where you can get rope that is like this. So this is your proper rope, the inside of this. And if I take this apart, it's full of uh, small strands of nylon. It doesn't matter how small a bit I get. Um, I can't, I can't break that off. So whatever you do, don't get this multicoloured rope from um, your hardware stores. It's done up to look good, but in the end it's going to fail. Go for the good rope that you get from your boat chandlery. For those of you who have gone to the bother of uh, installing your jib, I hope you're getting a lot of fun out of it, but I hope that you're not installing your jib or attaching your jib to this part of your spreader bar because if you do, the spreader bar will eventually break. And what I hope you've done is uh, uh, made up uh, a couple of new forestays and uh, attaching your jib uh, to here. Um, one other thing that I've done is uh, normally your, uh, this, normally this would attach into here. Now, I have found that by putting this into here, um, this bow eye has actually, um, on a couple of occasions, it's fractured. Um, it's taken a bit of force, but it has fractured. You'll notice that it's uh, slightly offset and actually follows um, the angle of the front forestay. When you put this extra forestay in, this other forestay is on this angle okay so when it's on that angle it's actually pulling on that angle on that bow eye which has a tendency um, to either bend it or make it crack so what I've done is bore through the hole just here and down here a bit further and just installed a bow eye so that I can attach this stay to. That way it's pulling it's pulling at that angle and there's no way that that's ever going to um, move from the front of the boat or break that fixture. Okay so that's something else that you can do to your boat to make it safer. Another small thing that you may want to do up near the hound at the top of the mast um, where all the stays uh, are attached via the shackle. When you're sailing, these stays uh, tend to rub against the uh, com tip or the uh, tip, the, uh, the top of the mast. Um, and in my case, it has started to rub a small hole in the mast. So all I've done is um, is uh, glue a piece of aluminium um, sheet on the mast uh, to to protect the mast. So rather than the wear out the mast it'll wear out this sheet of aluminium first. Also, if you've really got to the stage where you're really motoring along on your boat and uh, it's really powered up, you may find that where the top of your mast 
um, goes into the bottom section of your mast, you may find over time that the top of the mast is trying to work its way down into the bottom section of the mast. So what I've done to stop this is to uh, put a couple of pot rivets here and here and there's a couple on the other side as well. Okay, so there's something else you might want to consider if you're really sailing your boat hard. So have fun on your hobby wave.